You're listening to Product Biz Made Easy, episode 43, and today we're talking about three mistakes product-based business owners make. And I'm sharing them with you so you won't make them. So I hope you stick around. Welcome to the Product Biz Made Easy podcast, where we help you scale your product-based business. Your award-winning host and serial entrepreneur, Becky J. Anderson, created an eight-figure product-based brand that was sold all over the world and in big box retail stores. Each week, she will be sharing sales strategies, marketing advice, or inspiring interviews to help you scale your product-based business. Now, on to the show. Welcome back, friends. I'm so excited to be here with you today on the Product Biz Made Easy podcast. And today we're talking about mistakes that product-based business owners make that I see all the time. So I want to go through them so you don't make them. So let's start with the first one. The first one is they haven't learned the concept of you can't manage what you don't measure. And they're not properly utilizing their analytics that they can get information from. So let me give you some examples. If you don't have Google Analytics on your website, you can't use those numbers, you won't know those numbers, so you can't use them to make good business decisions. So what is Google Analytics telling you? It's telling you how many people are hitting your website, it's telling you how many people are bouncing off, it's telling you how many um, people are closing the deal. So you can learn a lot from it. So let me give you an example. I was meeting with a client this week and we were looking at their sales and the ad dollars that they were spending on a weekly and monthly basis in the business. And I said, do you know that where you're spending your money is the best place to spend it? And she said, yes, I'm getting all my traffic from Pinterest. So I'm moving all my ad dollars over to Pinterest. But I'm like, let's look at your analytics and see if that's the right decision. So we pulled up the Google Analytics and sure enough, she was getting all of her, I shouldn't say all, she was getting a huge amount, thousands and thousands of people to her website from Pinterest. But here's the clincher. The second traffic source was Facebook. And she was going to put all of her money onto Pinterest so she could get even more. But as we dug deeper and I started showing her, her bounce rate from Pinterest was almost 95%. That means 95% of the people that went over and clicked on her website immediately bounced right off. And then Facebook, the bounce rate was really low and people were staying on for two or three minutes. And yet she was going to move all the ad dollars off of Facebook. And I'm like, no, let's be strategic and really smart here. Let's put your ad dollars on Facebook, but let's put some retargeting to catch those people that are bouncing off of Pinterest. Sure, we can put some ad dollars on Pinterest, but most of the ad dollars need to be on Facebook because that's where the traffic is coming from. That's where you're getting your sales. Let's just catch who's bouncing off from Pinterest with retargeting and try to grab their email addresses and catch them with retargeting and give them the bonus. So see, there's a lot of things that you can learn by really digging deep into the analytics. Another thing that we learned is that they have put zero attention into YouTube, but they had maybe a dozen videos up. But as we looked at the analytics, the average time people were spending on their YouTube, uh, the YouTube videos was 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, goodness, we need to be doing way more videos for you because clearly your customers love them and they're staying on and consuming them. See, and if we hadn't have dug deeper into the Google Analytics, we wouldn't have known all that. So Google, not watching Google Analytics and not taking the numbers and strategically using them to grow your business is the number one big mistake of today. So the number two mistake is I see clients and product-based business owners who just don't plan for sales. You can't just put your website up and assume you're going to get sales. You have to literally plan for sales and you have to do promotions with systems behind them to drive the sales. So let me give you an example of what I would say a promotion that we did in my business. We had a fragrance of the month club because we were candles. Okay, so every month on the first, I launched a program that had a candle in it, a warmer, and another air fragrance thing. So it was three items and we sold it for $35. And it was a $50 value with the items that we had in it. And every month on the first, we launched that program and um, 
over time, people learned that this was coming on the first and it went away on the last day of the month. But what this does is strategically is it gives you a program to have to drive sales. And it becomes very easy to say, okay, on the first, we're going to send out an email that explains what the new fragrance of the month is or what the new product of the month is, whatever you sell. And then we're going to go through it each week and say, okay, there's only how many weeks left? Make sure that you grab it or have you seen this program? And then on the last day of the month, you put out an email that says, this is going away at midnight. And so what it does is it drives that sense of urgency, but you're planning for sales. And so you're being very strategic about it in driving sales to this program. And over time, it became a, a real serious part of our strategy because we knew every month we could count on so many cells from that program. So it became very important to us and we would lay out the whole program for the year so that we knew. So you have to be able to do that. Now, another thing I want you to do is you're planning cells. Another thing I want you to do is you're planning cells and planning promotions is I want you to record every month what sell you did and how many you sold. So that as you're planning future events, you can say, wow, did that work? Or or this promotion was bad. I mean, like, is it better to do 50 off? Or is it better to do buy one, get one free? You know, you start recording what your promotions are, and then how many you sold. And then if there was anything specific that happened that month, make sure you record it too. So like weather can affect different things can affect sales every month. And so I want you to be able to record what the promotion was, how many you sold, and was there any anomaly or something that happened that drove sales up. So let me give you a perfect example of that. We would record every month what our promotions were and what our sales were, but we noticed in the summer our sales were really high and um, for a couple of years, and the the J months are typically slower. And so we started digging in and going, what's happening with that cell? Why is it? And then we discovered it was a doctor in the area that on the first of the month, he would come and order a whole bunch of gift baskets for everybody that was having a baby in his practice that month. Okay, so then you go, well, that's really cool. But then all of a sudden, it dropped off. So we're like, why, why are the cells down this month compared to what they were? And then we realized what had happened. And apparently this doctor was going around from business to business and doing it. And he had picked June and July to buy from us. So what it did for us is we started going, okay, are there other doctors in the area? Yes, tons of them. Let's take this and go out and show them what we can do for them. And so it gave us ideas to really be strategic and to drive sales. And had we not been watching the numbers and recording different things and causes that had made the numbers go up, we would have never come up with that idea. So the second, to recap that, the second uh, mistake product-based business owners make is they don't plan for sales. They don't put products, promotions, and systems behind their sales. And it's very, very important that you do that. The third mistake that I see product-based business owners make is they don't plan and strategize their week. And so if you just start Monday morning and let things start rolling and different things get in the way, phone calls, interruption with a kid, whatever, you haven't planned out your week. So you need to take the time to plan out your week strategically. You need to time block and touch each department in your business every week. Set up a model calendar. It doesn't have to be like glue. You can be fluid a little bit, but what it does is it gives you a roadmap and a plan to kind of plan your week. And so there's five departments in your business I want you to touch every week. Some of them may be 10, 15 minutes, some of them may be hours. So the areas that you need to plan and schedule on your calendar are business development, and that would be creating new products, personal development, business growth opportunities, things in the business development area. The second one is operations. This is when you make your product or when the operational things of your business that you go over and spend time working on that. The third area is the sales and marketing. And this is where most of your time needs to go. You can have the best product in the world, but if nobody knows you exist, it's not going to work. So spend a lot of time on that one. 
And then the administrative side, you need to take the time to do that, review your numbers, review your sales, go over your finances, all that kind of stuff in the administrative. So make sure you're touching that because you really want to make sure you maintain the best margins that you can and that you're taking care of everything there and not getting behind on anything. This would be your paperwork, your taxes, anything administrative or financial, put in a section and spend some time looking at it. And then the fifth and last one is customer service. Make sure that you're checking that, your customers are happy that you're keeping your customers on board and that you're communicating with them and letting them know what's going on. So I hope that helps. If you want to dig deeper into the system strategy and processes, I have a program, Perfectly Planned Day. You can check that out on my website on beckyjanderson.com. And of course, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time. And I would love it if you would go over to... Apple podcast or wherever you listen and leave us a review. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.